Hey Transformers fans, greetings from Cybertron on this wonderful Fan First Friday. For anyone who's thinking, wait a second, I thought Ben from the Transformers team was going to be on today. Well, surprise, I'm also Ben from the Transformers team. You can kind of just think of me as a fluffier, furrier version of Rachel. Speaking of Rachel, for those of you who joined us for Hasbro Pulse Fan Fest, you know she was pretty much ready to go into labor on stream. Well, we're happy to report that Rachel and Baby are both doing great. All right, let's get into it. Welcome today to my co-host, Evan, from the Transformers design team. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another Transformers Fan First Friday. We've got some great stuff to show you. If you couldn't already tell by looking at the screen, today's Fan First Friday is all about celebrating the 35th anniversary of the 1986 The Transformers The Movie. While the actual 35th anniversary is until August, we wanted to give you a peek into some of the things coming to celebrate 35 years since, spoiler alert, we killed Optimus Prime the first time. I cried, so thanks for that. I mean, I, I did too, and then there was the therapy, and then more therapy, but I'm better now. I'm not, so... <laughs> I'd also like to first thank 80s Tees for supplying us with these brand new The Transformers The Movie shirts. You can head over to their website after the stream and check out these great pieces along with some additional movie designs. All right, so to kick things off today, we have an interview with Kelly from the Transformers brand team and the extremely talented Matt Ferguson. Kelly had a chance to sit down and talk to Matt about his lifelong love for the Transformers brand along with a behind the scenes look at Matt's creative process. I can't wait for you all to see his insane art that will be adorning the 35th anniversary Steelbook, Blu-ray, and the restored 4K UHD. Let's have a look. Hey Transformers fans, I'm Kelly and I am part of the Transformers brand here at Hasbro. And we have a very special guest for you today. A person whose artwork is renowned and beloved all through the world. He's known for Star Wars and the Marvel Cinematic Universe. You've seen his striking and beautifully stylized designs immortalized in theater poster art and so much more. But now he is bringing his artistic genius to the Transformers universe as we celebrate our 35th anniversary of the Transformers the movie and to top it off he's actually a Transformers fan himself so please allow me to introduce the one the only Mr. Matt Ferguson welcome Matt Hello. it's Hi, so everybody. great to see you <laughs> <laughs> yeah you too thanks for having me yeah thanks for spending some time with us today so obviously uh, this year marks the 35th anniversary of Transformers the movie um, and we've invited you here because we want to share something very special with our fans today as we are revealing for the first time the limited edition steelbook of Transformers the movie which the artwork was designed and created by none other than Matt Ferguson here so I want you to have a first look at that so we've got the steelbook art as well as the 4K DVD version. Um, so they went ahead and restored it with a 4K transfer using the original film elements. Matt created the art for both versions. And I mean, you can see you just simply nailed it for both. You've got explosions and the characters, those pivotal moments, all the overarching visual themes that are necessary to the brand. And you managed to deliver your unique style for the 4K version and then do this really cool minimalist feel for the steelbook. So in looking at those two deliverables, I'm curious how long each of those took um, separately. Uh, well, so the steelbook took less time because there's less characters on it, but it was still quite complicated because me being like a little bit, obviously like a, G a G1 Transformers fan, I kind of wanted the environment to be accurate. So you could scrub through the film and you look at all the, the back plates and paintings and stuff and you sort of realize that it's not the same from scene to scene because they were hand painted so then I'm like okay I've got to get a feel for it so I made that the environment in 3D and then 
through the characters. So that took a lot of work. And then for the 4K, we were like, let's do everything. Let's have as many characters as possible. So then that that was the real job because it was like, let's have everyone on. And then I was like, I did Devastator down at the bottom holding up Sludge uh, from the fight. And then I was like, yeah, I've got one Dinobot. We should have another Dinobot. So then I added another Dinobot and I was like, but now let's have them all. So it kind of like snowballed and then you end up with uh, what we ended up with, which I, I, I am quite happy with it actually which I don't often say about my own work. <laughs> oh, I think you should be very happy with it. So I think based on your answer so far, I might have an idea. And I know you're never supposed to ask a parent which child is their favorite, but when you were drawing this, who was your favorite to draw? Uh, well, it would be the Dinobots, probably specifically Grimlock, because he's a robot T-Rex and it's like the coolest thing ever. I mean. It, obviously the cars turn into robots and when you're a kid you're watching that that's awesome but then there's dino dinosaurs that turn into robots and it's like there's nothing cooler nice yeah and i think we've got some of the concept art that you shared with us um i know we've got grimlock in there uh do you want to kind of talk us through just some of the other concept art and the sketches and because i think you applied some interesting techniques to get it to your your finished look can you walk us through that yeah so like obviously like in the film and in the cartoon it's like cell shaded so it, they would do the line art and then they would paint behind and then the backdrops would be painted and that's how they could animate it quickly back back in the day before computers and stuff but i always liked that when they did like posters for animated films that they kind of would give them a painterly feel um so i wanted to give this art kind of like that so i tried to render them kind of more realistically in three dimensions. So I start with the sketch, which is like the line art, and then I'll build on top of that and layer it up and paint it and add highlights and stuff and try and, and I try to eliminate the hard black lines on all the characters. It's really difficult, like with the faces as well, because the way they're drawn, is kind of like impossible because it's a cartoon. So to get the capture the character, you have to sort of cheat as well at the same time. So it's kind of like a tug, it was like a tug of war between giving it sort of a realistic three dimensions and giving it a painterly realistic feel and then the cartoon feel. So yeah, it was an interesting one to work on because it was different to how I would usually work because I don't often do cartoon characters. So yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, then I think it's it's time to let everybody in on what's up next. Matt, I cannot thank you enough for your time and sharing your stories and your insight to your process. And obviously, thank you for the incredible work. The artwork is, is just great. Oh, thank you, honestly. It's been, it's been a real uh, privilege working on it. And like, if I could tell six-year-old me, oh, you're going to make an actual poster for this that's up there because when you're little you don't understand that somebody makes it you just like the thing so it's sort of it, it is sort of like a dream come true but also it's not because it's not something i even imagined was possible when i was a kid so it's like a really surreal experience working on something like transformers in a really good way so yeah thank you awesome so with that, uh, we'll let you know that Transformers, the movie uh, in 4K limited edition steelbook is going to be available for pre-order at shopfactory.com starting on Monday, May 24th. And fans that pre-order will receive a Transformer lithograph featuring the new art by Matt as a gift with purchase while supplies last. And then the standard edition 4K ultra high def will also be available for pre-order later this summer. And it is packed with bonus features and storyboards, deleted alternative and extended scenes. So don't miss your chance to bring home the movie that started it all, featuring packaging that goes beyond good, beyond evil, beyond your wildest imagination. Thank you for your time. Till all are one. Dude, that artwork is so beautiful. I know what I'll be purchasing on Monday. I'm not sure about you. Uh, yeah. 
I sadly only own the Canadian 1995 VHS that has the extra two minutes in it. My dad got me this for Christmas when I was a kid. Um, means a lot to me. And then, of course, I have the 20th anniversary special edition back when VHS players started to, you know, go extinct. I needed to get a DVD so I could show my friends what this movie was. And then, of course, I have the 30th edition Blu-ray, which is what we use to reference colors for this, you know, for this whole segment. So, of course, I'm going to be buying the new one. It's a good thing you really dislike Transformers and you've never watched this movie before. (laughs) Just, yeah, just a little bit. If you're interested in checking out the full interview with Matt and Kelly, it'll be up later today on the Hasbro Pulse YouTube channel. All right. You guys have waited long enough. Let's get to it. The stuff you're here for today reveals. Let's roll the clip. Execute them! Grah! Excuse me. (laughs) All right. Since this one leaked like a month ago, let's go ahead and officially confirm this one for you. First up, we have Slug. That's right, Slug and Daniel. Yep, continuing with our leader scale Dinobots. You guys can transition on over to me. I'm gonna start out with the dinosaur mode. Here we have everybody's favorite Triceratops. So, this fantastic looking design is brought to you by the very talented hasui san over at Takara Tomi. Slug comes with a little Daniel figure on top, very similar to how Grimlock came with a little wheelie figure. Speaking of Grimlock, I'd say they look pretty good right next to each other in dinosaur mode. What do you guys think? Let us know down in the comment section below. But yeah. Now you can recreate everybody's favorite scenes of arguing about salami and baloney, uh, which was the scene that I had debated using as the introductory clip to these guys, but we decided that excuse me was funnier. And we are now only one away from completing the original trio of the Dinobots. You know, when we go to robot mode, it always is kind of weird because I feel like everybody always displays these in dinosaur mode. Just or maybe that's just me yeah i don't know same here you know except for the one still in pack behind me <laughs> that's right you have your grimlock in a box in the background right yeah Which, you know you gotta keep them grimlock, fresh you don't want them to age a toy is meant to be played with and as we distract <laughs> everybody i'm very quickly converting a grimlock right now so i can show you guys what these look like right next to each other i only have one grimlock and i should have prepared better and gotten another one but thankfully grimlock's converting hasn't changed in like 35 years ah ah okay <laughs> i think that's record conversion uh, time no i doubt it but yeah so these two obviously <laughs> look pretty dang good right next to each other very similar and uh, um, grimlock daniel just locks it up there on his shoulder huh And then it's the same ports that Wheelie had, so you can take Daniel and also put him on Grimlock's shoulder. Hmm. Yep. So coloring-wise for this guy, obviously when we're looking at this, both modes, you can kind of see that we very much were going after his animation appearance as opposed to his G1 toy appearance. What does that mean, you ask? Well, those familiar with the... I'm going to use, this isn't the G1 toy, obviously, this is the Combiner Wars Deluxe that we released a couple years ago, but its deco was based off of the G1 toy. So you can kind of see how the horns are red. He also had had a black robot mode head, compared differently to how he appeared in the animation with a red head. So, yeah. But It's all about those details. Well, yeah, that's what Studio Series is all about. Accessory-wise, obviously, as you saw, he comes with Daniel, but then he comes with his blaster, which then stores in the tail of his dinosaur mode. So, and I think now, actually, we can go ahead and talk about the backdrop and his box. So, obviously, his backdrop is going to be the Shark to Come Pit, because that's when the Dinobots really came into their own in the movie, and they weren't getting, you know, demolished by Devastator. And then, of course, we're continuing the 86 numbering. So he is number seven. Yeah, 86 number seven. 
perfect. It's almost kind of like this scene is like famous, fans kind of like it or something. I don't know. You know, now that's the second time we've seen this backdrop. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty iconic. And it's always fun to see how fans set these scenes up. And if you do set any of these scenes up, please tag us on social media so we can see them. Because it's always a joy to see people posing these guys out and doing funny things. I know when everybody got Cup and the monstrosities that they were making with Cup, that made us all laugh. And we loved that. So please <laughs> keep doing that. That's wonderful. All right. So this perfectly leads us into our next reveal. Roll the clip. We don't have any voices to do, so I'm just going to fake heavy metal music. When I see what I want, I'm going to take it. <laughs> this one, I believe, hasn't actually leaked online yet. At least as of uh, so far. Maybe. We hope. Uh, I honestly didn't get a chance to check. No, it's been a hectic week. I haven't had time. Uh, but yes, so next up, obviously, we have our army builder for the movie. So here we have the Quintesson Sar Savage Shark Takan Warriors. So this is Na, which we always name Na because that's what the G1 toy was, even though they're just Shark Takans. But yeah, so this is another one that's brought to you by hasui -san. And here I will zoom in to kind of show you the Shark Takan mode because that's the mode that I think everybody's going to leave this guy in. Uh, opening, mouth and jaw, so they can bite your other characters and rip them apart as they did in the movie. So as you can see, we bumped him up to a deluxe scale. So I'm going to compare him to this little Legion class guy, which was our last release. I'm not counting the redeco that we did uh, for the Pit of Judgment. But yeah, you can kind of see how the size difference really plays into this. And he should be a really good deluxe. It's going to be some fun stuff. Yeah, I, I think so. I really like this guy. He's got such a interesting chunky design it's the like fluorodiri kind of design um we we prefer the f term fluffy oh i'm sorry i will continue to use that from now on <laughs> fluffy he's got a very <laughs> fluffy robotic design as you can see right here he comes with the blaster that his g1 toy came with wasn't featured in the movie at all but we just wanted to make sure that it was included and then of course he has his mace tail that is on an articulated oh. hinge. He's got his tail mace. Yes, he does. And you can give it to Cup <laughs> so that he can bash brains. Uh, I see what you did there. Of course. Um, so obviously his backdrop is also going to be the shark to con pit because it's the shark to con pit. <laughs> so <laughs> we can't put him anywhere else. Uh, number wise, kind of, kind of makes guy, sense. Uh, just just a little bit, and this this gets our shark to con pick characters out of the way for the rest of the day. And then of course this guy is number eight, I believe, on our eighty six packaging. Hmm, seven, and... then eight. All right, so we've done two shark to con pick characters. What else do we have? Don't look. Behind door number two, Monty, it's time to play End of the Line, my Valentine. Ja, Ronnie, do, ra, ra, Ronnie, ma! That was really impressive. And it's also great That's that we just get to watch the flowy mustache, so. Uh, yes, in Studio Series, this is our second character to have a mustache. Um, I, I, real quick before we introduce it, I just love talking about that scene because I love how you can see Perceptor just like everybody else is turning into a car, and then he's just like, ah, and he just runns because he can't turn into anything <laughs> that has wheels. So, yes, Wait, so you mean here we go. Every... can't run away with their wheels? No, he technically has tank treads, but we'll talk about that later. Okay, so. <laughs> Behold, our favorite TV talking leader of the planet of junk. Here we have Rekgar. You know, Sans art filter. We were so close to getting this one in front of you before he leaked. We were. We, we were. It's like it was on the calendar to show this off, and then that happened, and we were all just like, no! <laughs> uh, but yeah. Okay. So, as you can see with Rekgar, we bumped him up to Voyager scale. And I'm going to switch on over to this to show you his vehicle mode and another version of him riding. Oops, knocked off his armor axe, which has storage on the back. But yeah, so as you can see, 
we wanted to make sure that he was big enough so that other characters could ride on him and it would look pretty okay. So of course with another Voyager character, he looks pretty good. And then you can actually pop him off. And then, oh, I don't know, just grab any old deluxe, like maybe your Power of the Primes Rekgar. Which was the last Rekgar we did before this one. And you can just pop him right on there. And then, yeah. Yep, So looks pretty good too. I think so. It The scale gets a little ridiculous if you try and put like a leader class character, like you can try and put Ultra Magnus on if you want, or maybe try putting Jetfire. Who knows? That actually sounds That's hilarious it. if anybody does somebody, do that. Somebody give me a jet fire. I gotta try this out. Yeah. Uh, if anybody does do that, I, I want to see pictures on Instagram of it. Like, that would be wonderful, and that would make my day. But please make sure that you tag us. But yeah, so let's talk about point of accessories and things like that. So, obviously, he has his wheel shields that he uses to transform. He's got his armor axe that you can store on his back, or obviously he can hold in his hand. But this is basically just a pinwheel of death. All right, so today we got a mace tail accessory, now an armor axe, along with a wheel that doubles as a shield. Their 2005 yep. was way more medieval than that year turned out to be far off future of 2005. Well, we still don't have any giant converting robots from outer space roaming around to our knowledge. So, no. I mean, that's kind of a minor detail. That's what imaginations are for. Yeah, a little bit. But this is actually a great picture to land on to show the backdrop. So, obviously with him, there could only be one place, and that is the planet of junk. You can recreate either my absolute favorite chase scene, or the dance party that they have afterwards. It's up to you. This one was a fun one to shoot. Like the rust colors in the background really made for this great backdrop for the character to stand against. And we just kind of had a lot of fun trying to recreate the scene of him with, you know, his ax just coming over his head and just like, you know, going full in on it. His colors were actually kind of hard to knock down because every version of the movie the transfer and the colors shifted slightly, and so we were trying to nail down his colors, and it was just like, where, which one is right? And so we el we ultimately ended up going with the 30th anniversary Blu-ray edition because they did some color correcting in that movie to match the painted cells. And so we were like, okay, this has to be the correct version. So He looks good, but, I like him. Yeah, but yeah, so this is our number nine for our 86 Studio Series packaging. So. Hmm. Seven, eight, and nine. That's that's interesting. Wonder how we we got there. I don't know. Basic math, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, folks. There you have it. That's wave three of the eighty-six Studio Series characters, and those guys hit shelves this summer. We'll have pre-orders going live at one p.m. Eastern Standard Time today. Be sure to check out our socials for all the details. All right, Evan, if you had to pick a favorite, which one would it be? You're asking me to pick a favorite, and then I'm wearing a Rekgar shirt. So everybody's going to assume I'm going to say Rekgar. Um, this is more like trying to pick a favorite child in a weird way. So I'm going to put it like this. It's Every time we start to develop a new character, like we work off of a new design, uh, that kind of becomes my favorite. Um, so I guess what I'm going to say is thank you all for continuing your support of the Studio Series 86 segment. It's, it's tremendous. So thank you all. It really means a lot to us. And we're going to continue to try and bring more figures your way. Wait a second. Did you just confirm that there's more 86 characters on the way? Not in any legal sense of, of the word. No. <laughs> all right. Well, that's going to do it for us. Thank you for joining us on this, our first Fan First Friday of 2021. Wait, you're, aren't you forgetting something? Uh, I don't I don't think so. Come on, man. It's a, it's a Fan First Friday. It's like we can't have a Transformers Fan First Friday without talking about some sort of exclusive, right? Ah, right. You know, exclusives. You guys all love exclusives, right? So, obviously, them. we're going to have to show you our Hasbro Pulse exclusive 
Behold, the White Knight of the Decepticons, the heroic Starscream. Wait, did I say that right? Yep, yep. Heroic Starscream. That just kind of feels weird, right? Yes, it does. <laughs> but... As with the rest of Shattered Glass line, Starscream will come with his Hasbro Pulse exclusive variant cover included with purchase. This cover is once again done by the super talented Casey Collar. It'll come with its foil logo, UV spot finish on the glass shards, along with the matte cover finish. These covers are straight up out of the glory days of the 90s comic boom, and I totally can't wait to get my hands on them, along with the other variant covers that you'll be able to see coming from IDW over the summer. All right, Evan, give us the details on this pivotal character in the Shatters Glass Shards miniseries. All right, I'll, I'll do what I can. I am literally just a stand-in for Lenny, you know, the fantastic friendly designer that you all love. Um, this was actually his, but since I was here today showing off Studio Series stuff, they were like, hey, show this too. And I'm like, oh, okay. Um, so yeah, so here we have our Shattered Glass Starscream and his amazingly Jetfire inspired color scheme that really makes this Tetrajet mold hit differently. It's kind of weird. Yeah, I mean, I definitely agree. I love the clean lines and the brightness, and character-wise, it's such a departure from everything we know about Starscream. Yeah, uh, it's, I don't know, it's just so crazy how just like a simple color alteration can really make this look completely different. But yeah, so accessory-wise, obviously he comes with his Null Rays that he always comes with, but he also comes with this Energon Sword that you see here that can actually split into two Energon Sabers. His sabers are awesome. The big one-piece sword is really neat, but you know, when you get to split them into two, it makes for some really fun action poses. I don't know. It's just it's just a lot of fun. Um, so this is the third character in our Shattered Glass line, and he'll be available later today for pre-orders. All right. I mean, Shattered Glass is such a great segment. The response to Megatron was overwhelming. Uh, from all of us on the Transformers team, thank you. Uh, we, we're really just glad you guys are enjoying what we've done with this so far. We're excited to continue to bring this to you. It's done really well at Hasbro Pulse. We're just, you know, it's a whole fan thing. So uh, be sure to sound off in the comments, you know, and let us know what you think the last two characters that are coming out this year are. Who are you guys looking to see? And make sure you let us know what you think of this super heroic White Knight Starscream as well. I gotta say, I got a little sneak peek inside the interiors of the first issue from Guido Guidi the other day, and all I can say is wow. When fans finally get this book in their hands, I know they're gonna love it. Alright, so that's gonna officially do it for us this Fan First Friday. I didn't forget anything else, right? Like, we're good? Uh, I have nothing else on my table to show, so... Perfect. Alright. Thank you, Evan, for joining me and walking the fans through these amazing, exciting reveals. Any final thoughts you want to share? Always a pleasure. Um, thank you all again for your continued support of Studio Series and also Shattered Glass. We'll do everything we can to keep bringing these amazing figures your way. So till all are one. All right. A very special thank you to Shout Factory, Matt Ferguson, and Kelly for their behind the scenes look at the 35th anniversary home entertainment artwork. And don't forget, you can pre-order it Monday, May 24th on shoutfactory.com. I know where I'll be. And for those of you joining us from the UK, good news, there'll be some UK-specific special editions coming your way in September. Keep an eye out for those. Thank you again to 80s Tees for the shirts. To check out all of the 86 movie apparel over on 80stees.com and make sure you're looking fresh for those August anniversary celebrations. It doesn't just stop there, though. We heard you like discounts. So how does 30% off your apparel order sound? You can use the promo code I still function at checkout and honor the fallen Megatron with your purchase. For all the figures revealed here today, they'll be available for pre-order at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time over on Hasbro Pulse. Make sure to check out social for all the details. Don't forget to like and share and hit follow on the Hasbro Pulse YouTube channel for more great content. Thanks for watching till all are one.